Hey everyone, this is Shintai, and here with me I have special guest Darren, known for the gaming pilgrimage. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thanks for having me here. I love talking about underrated Tales games that people need to like. People do need to like this game. Today we're going to be talking about Tales of Graces F, and we're going to be asking the question, is this game overhated? And I think the answer is yes. Absolutely yes, absolutely. So I think when the game first came out, I think the reception was generally positive. And I don't know, I think sometimes down the road, people became a lot more mixed on the game. It's become more of a love-hate game in the series. You know what? This game does have its problems. Darren and I agree, you know, it's not perfect by any means. No, for sure. I do think that it doesn't deserve this love-hate perception that it has. I think it deserves more love than it deserves hate. How do you feel? For sure. When you look at the pros and cons of the games, I think there's a lot more good going about it than there is bad. Because most pe points that people harp on is having a weaker story and kind of characters than other games in the series, which is part true and part false. But again, that is a really subjective thing. And the thing that most people don't really consider is that Tales of Graces was originally a Wii title in Japan. And I think what they were going with Namco, and that was at the time the publisher, now it's uh, Bandai Namco, but what they were going for was they were trying to create a game to cater more to the younger audience of the Wii. So that's why they have a game about friendship and whatnot, and it has kind of these cheesy, really cliched notions and topics that you'd see in like a kid's cartoon or something, or like a very, or an anime target for a younger audience. Yeah, we were discussing that before the recording, and I totally agree with you. I didn't even think about that, because when we got it, we got it as a PS3 game, which we should, because the Wii version was very glitchy. But, yeah, yeah I didn't even think about that, but it makes complete sense. The, the Wii is a console geared more towards younger audiences. It makes perfect sense to release a game on it where the story is not as complex, the themes aren't as sophisticated, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. And I think the way that the game handles its themes is fine. Okay, the friendship thing, it does take a little too far at times, it's a little obnoxious from time to time, but it's not anything that breaks the narrative, I don't think. It's I still think it's a fairly entertaining story for what it is. And of course, Tales games, I think, are more so known for their wonderfully written characters. And I think Graces still has a really solid cast. Yeah, and a lot of points people don't really consider to is the amount of skits and optional conversations these characters have. And the one thing that Graces have had going for it that not many other games the series have is how humorous they all are. Whereas, like, Vesperia is a, is a good example of really humorous Tales game, which in all of its skits usually had some sort of humor. And I'm not saying every other Tales game hasn't been funny, because they're definitely there. But I think Graces have had the biggest emphasis on that to be a more lighthearted game. And I guess it depends what you want going into it. Do you want, like, a really dark, realistic, depressing story about how friendship is good or bad? Or, or do you want, like, a lighter spin on it? And I think the Tales games have always gone for a lighter atmosphere in their narratives. A lot of people seem to associate simple with bad, and I never understood this because I feel that a simple story can be just as compelling as a complex one. Not only that, but I, I'm not always going to want to be in the mood to want to play a game or just in general maybe watch a show with like a really deep complex story. I think that there's something nice and charming about having just a simple story with likable characters. Hell, I would say like even some of the greatest films of all time, some of Akira Kurosawa's work, have generally really simple plots but it emphasizes the human element more so than anything else, which makes them as memorable as they are. So I think this, this entire perception of just simple being bad is extremely misguided. And I think that's one of the chief complaints people have about Graces, is that it's so much simpler compared to Vesperia or the other games in the series. And I always bring up, like, why is that a bad thing? Why is a simple story bad? I think it's an enjoyable story, regardless of how complex it is. And I think people need to drop this notion that just simple things are bad. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when we had Tales of the Abyss, that was probably... A lot of people hold it as one of the high points for storytelling in the series. And that's definitely something I'd say is true. But it also associated a lot more uh, complexity to it. It had a lot of terms that were made up for the game. It kind of had that Final Fantasy 13 effect where you need to kind of know the in-game terms in order to understand the story. Whereas 
whereas games like Tales of Asperia and Grace's F don't really have that. Anyone can approach them. And I think that level of approachability was what helped make the game a big success. Because before Grace's F came out, the Tales series is kind of waning in Western releases. Then after Grace's F came out, the game sold well here in the West, and the series is now, for, as far as I can tell, being successful here. Yeah, I would say as much crap people give Grace's, even if you don't like the game, you have to, at the very least, be appreciative of the fact that Graces has rekindled awareness of the series in the West, and we're finally, not just the West, but also in, in, in Power Region as well, and we're finally getting new games. Because of it, we got Zillia's 1 and 2. Zestiria has already been confirmed that it's going to be released in English. I think this is wonderful. Like, even if I hated Graces, which, you know, of course, I, I think it's great, but, like, on the presupposition that I, even if I didn't like the game, I would still at the same time go, you know what, I may not have enjoyed it, but goddammit, it brought back Tales, and that alone, I think, warrants at least some modicum of respect. For sure. Like, it's a similar case with Final Fantasy VII. If people do or do not like that game, which most people like it, but if they were even to not like it, you still have to appreciate the fact that it made JRPGs huge here, and that's what Grace's F kind of is for the series. And we also had a big gap in releases from Vesperia till Grace's F, and everyone was really uncertain whether or not anything was going to happen, but since it's been such a huge success, do you think we should get into why we think it is so good? Definitely. I mean, I think even people who don't like the game will at the very least admit that the combat is amazing! I don't think I've ever read a single review or comment saying they did not like the combat. I think I've only gotten that once, and honestly, it seemed pretty weak to me at the time. The only thing I could really think that'd be negative for the combat is kind of how it starts off with the whole child arc. Yes. And I'd argue this whole arc is probably the biggest problem with the game because it is a little slow and it is really simplistic in terms of story, characters, and even the combat where everything's assigned to a single button. And at first, when I, I don't know about you, Shintai, when I first played through the game, I was really surprised that everything was mapped to a single button and thought it was like way too simplistic. And then after that first three hours and it goes into the main arc of the game, they say, oh yeah, here's this other button and all these other things you can do in combat. And it blew my mind. Honestly, when I very first got Tales of Graces, I was bitterly disappointed by how simplistic it was. I was like, the whole game is pressing X? You can't be serious. Yeah, exactly. There's no way. This is so... Uh. And then right when you hit the adult arc, and then you could use Demon Fang, I was like, yes! Draw your sword. And I was like, oh, he has his sword in his sheath. And then you'd press this button to draw it. Oh! And each character has a mechanic like that, too. And they inter like, I think it completely subverts your expectations. Which is like, it, it's a good way of doing it. You, it makes you think the combat works like this, and then it completely surprises you and opens up. And it's a more natural way than, say, a game like Final Fantasy XIII, where they hold your hand for 10 or so hours until you unlock all the options, whereas Grace's F only really introduces you for the first couple of hours, and then it opens up. But the game does provide you tutorials throughout the battles all the time, telling you about new maneuvers. There's still things to learn. Actually, since I'm hot off of playing Zillia 2, I just finished it, and for this discussion I replayed a little bit of Tales of Graces F to refresh myself on the game a bit. It just reminded me the defensive and evasive mechanics of Tales of Graces F still remain the absolute best in the series. While Zillia 2 tried to alleviate that a bit by adding the sidestepping, the controls for it are a little sloppy, especially when you hold up because you might jump instead of sidestep. Graces does not have that issue at all. It's defensive and evasive mechanics are super tight and spot on. Yeah, I have just played Tales of Exilia 2 not too long ago, and the entire time I was playing that, I was thinking in the back of my mind, I don't know why, but I want to go back to Grace's F. And I think a big part of that was I mainly played as Jude for a while, and Jude has the snap pivot, which is essentially like dodging and circling mechanics in Grace's F, but he's like the only character from that game. It's like the most similar. And I really didn't like it that Jude was the only character, and I felt like they were really limiting me in how I could operate in battles. But with since Grace's F has that, it makes for some of the best boss battles in the series. Yeah, I know this one guy, his name is The Fang Soup, and he makes a bunch of Tales combos videos. And for Tales of Graces, it's pretty much exclusively him playing as Asbel by himself, fighting against the bosses one on one. Those are really cool videos, you should check them out. It also shows off just how technical the combat system and how deep it is. And if you actually like take the time 
to learn it like these mechanics are just really tight and well made yeah it's like the other games in the series there's always that entry level button mashing that anyone can do and for most people they probably could get through the game but you do need some strategy in, in all the series but with grace's f i feel like it's as deep as you want it to be because there's no tp and it's all handled through uh, cc because it had that it limits you essentially to what you can combo with but there's ways to gain it back and it just makes for one of the most entertaining ways to battle. I can't think of many games where I would force myself to battle just because I was having so much fun in every battle. Especially when you figure out how to switch between the A arts and the B arts, because it seems a little jarring at first because you have to like take out the sword first and then you could move into all the other B arts. But once you really get a feel for Asbel's character and you figure out how to get a good flow with his moveset, it, re it becomes really rewarding just to figure out how to really maneuver the character and to use his moveset. That kind of system, I haven't really felt anything that rewarding in a while, just learning how the character works, aside from like some more hardcore action games like Devil May Cry or something. And it's also a lot of fun experimenting with the other characters as well, because I don't know about you, but I play a lot of the Tales games in multiplayer, and from my experience, the only time where I've successfully like had fun playing with all four players is with Grace's F. Usually at the other Tales games, no one likes to be the healer, or someone doesn't like being this, but the Grace's F, it all just works so much better, and the fact that everyone has to learn their characters, and having the B arts and A arts really made that experience a lot better for playing with other people. I would agree, because in Grace's Races, the A art has a tree for all the different skills that you can do. So even if you're playing someone like Sharia or Pascal, who are typically more spellcasting type characters, you could still have a lot of fun playing as them, still trying to figure out the different trees in their A arts. It just makes the game so much more fun, I think, adding that extra bit of nuance and depth. But I think another thing that Grace's F does better than pretty much any other Tales game, and that Zillia 2 shamelessly ripped off. The title system. I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. The title system is one of the most addicting character progression systems I have ever used. It's just so much fun, I think. The sense of empowerment that you get with the title system. I can't think of many other games that reaches that level of addiction and just feeling like you just want to keep fighting and just keep getting stronger. It's so much fun. Yeah, like this, I don't think the Tales games outside of this, maybe even Exilia 2's case, have a system quite like it where it encourages you to go fight and you actually want to keep fighting. You want to unlock the new titles, you want to still mess around with new combos. And best of all, because in each title, you do get whatever stat bonuses, but you can see every single thing you'll get from that title. And it also rewards you for going outside of combat and talking to other NPCs or watching skits or doing other things to unlock other titles to get their arts and benefits from. Yeah, you want to like do all the side quests because those unlock other titles as well. All the things that you do in the game, it feels like you're always constantly benefiting from it and you're just getting better and stronger. Again, can't think of many systems that just offers that sense of empowerment. But I think one of the things that really makes the tile system just shine is just how much freedom it gives you. Like the way that I decided to level up my Asbel is going to be very different from how you did it, simply because of what titles we decided to go for and how we decided to use the title system. You know, I'm the kind of person that I want to master a title before I move on to another one. You might be the kind of person that just wants to like get up to level three and then move on to a different one. Because of that, this offers like this great sense of flexibility in like how you want to level up your characters. Exactly. I feel the same way. I couldn't have said that better myself. But I also really liked how it even like allowed the type of player who only wanted to get it for the one skill just to move on. It wasn't like Exilia where it limits you essentially, or even Exilia 2. It's not as free flowing. You can't just move on to other things. If you want to get that next healing art, you have to keep going in the healing tree. Whereas the Grace is F, you kind of have that little that flexibility. Not only that, but I felt that Zillia 2 made it a lot more difficult to do any long-term planning. Oh yeah. You have no idea, unless you look up on a guide, what skills and arts you're going to get for the fire element or whatever. Like, okay, fine, you're going to probably get some fire-related stuff, but I mean, in a general sense, you really don't know what you're going to get. I don't want to trash the alley more, because I do like it. I think it is a good system, but like... It's no title system, though. Exactly. <laughs> 
that's the point we'll both agree on. Because my most famous example from Tales of Exilia 2 is I needed Nurse and Revive, and I didn't get those till way later in the game, probably hours after I should have gotten them because I just didn't know what tree would get me them, what skill pool would actually reward me with Revive or anything like that. With Grace's F, you never had that doubt. They show you everything. It's completely transparent, and I think the game's all the better for it. I agree. And how much do you like the crafting system in this game? The Elif Mixer? Yes. I think it's great because similar to what you were saying before, like it, it can be as deep or as simplistic as you want it to be. Like You can play through the game and just set a bunch of books to it and just leave it at that. Or if you really want to, you can really get into like the dualizing and stuff or all the different sorts of things you can do. And the game rewards you for it because like the more you use it, the more points that you get for it, which allows you to use it even more. It's a really great little system, like alchemy system. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it in any, at least for a, from a Tales standpoint, I don't think there's been ever been quite as an in-depth alchemy system. Like not even Vesperia or Abyss really had anything quite like it. Like I can't think of any other entries in the series that have had something as deep as this, where it's in other games it's usually get X amount of items, give it to a vendor, they give you the weapon. This ties in what you were saying before, like how this was originally a Wii title, and it was generally aimed towards the younger audience. And you could just go through these different elements of the game and have a base understanding of it and still get by. But the game was also geared for veterans like us because we're older and we can understand these mechanics better and we could get the most out of them. That's what makes this game work so well, I think. Do you want to talk about some of the weaker elements? Sure. Because I was going to say, like, that child arc is definitely going to be the point that most people are not going to like the game. And I think a lot of that also comes down to Asbel as a character. He's not the greatest protagonist in the series. I'll say that right now. He won't be on my top 10 list or anything like that. But he's not a terrible character, but he is a bit annoying in how everything is about friendship, protecting friendship, ugh, friendship. I, rem I remember one line specifically that I was just face palming at when Asbel, I think it was asking Richard, where he was like, when someone dies, does that mean their friendship goes away too? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it's so terrible. Yeah, there's a lot of moments like that too. I think one funny instance is how I think one character that completely is different from everyone else is Asbel's father. In that whole childhood arc, he's like this abusive, just a total dick. He's like the abusive father. I'm sure some people may or may not be familiar with that type of character. But compared to everything else, which is so lighthearted and, you know, friendship is power and love and yada yada. And then you have this guy who backhands his kids in front of their friends, who locks him in his room, who like sells off his own child to another family. Yeah, that is so fucked up. <laughs> And then later on, my favorite part was in the epilogue, they completely try to like redeem his character, saying he is all doing it for the love of his children. Yeah, that was a little half-assed. I think that's another thing, too, is the epilogue chapter, or the future segment, is another part that kind of, in some ways, redeems the story, whereas the original Wii game ended after the main course of the game. Whereas the epilogue was, like I think it's about like 10, 12 hours long, depending on how quickly you want to go through it. And that just completely fleshes out where each character's at, what's happened to them. And I think without that, the game's story would have felt really incomplete or rushed, like Tales of Exilia, whereas the epilogue brought you the closure you wanted. I would compare the legacies and lineages to Exilia 2 in a way. I kind of see the two as very much the same sort of thing. Yeah. But legacies and lineages, you didn't have to pay 60 extra bucks for. <laughs> That's true. And it didn't have a debt system either. No, it didn't. But I, I really like Legacies and Lineages. I, I do agree. Like, it, it added more to the game. Like, it added a sense of finality to it. The ending to, like, the main game before Legacies and Lineages definitely wasn't bad or anything. It was a, it was a serviceable ending. Yeah. But Legacies and Lineages does a great job of tying everything together, leaving things off much better. Yeah, and it also has one of the best final bosses in any game, not even an RPG, but any game I've ever played. It also has one of the best homages to pa a past title. I don't know if you caught that at the end of it, where you have to use Final Mystic Art Eternal Blue. Shit, I did not catch that. It's from uh, Tales of Eternia. It's how you defeat the final boss from that game. I have not played through Eternia yet. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, that, that, the, the final boss, the whole uh, mystic art you need your whole team to pull off was an homage to that. I thought that was like one of the coolest things. Oh, that's awesome. That gives me more incentive to play through Eternia then. Yeah, for sure. You have to do that. But I wanted to go back to the, uh, the childhood arc real quick. I feel that that's pretty much 
the weakest part of the game. Part of it is because it is pretty slow. The combat is basically just mashing X the entire time. One of the things I did like about it, though, was I did like the idea of it. Of like, oh, you see all the, the, the main characters as little kids first. The story fast forwards to when they become adults. And I did like some of the personalities of the characters when they were younger. Like, Asbel was like really spunky and he's just like, oh, come on. Let's just go on adventures and stuff. And Huber was like a little scaredy cat. Like, it was cute and it was fun. Yeah, and it gives you some sort of investment in the characters. And that way it kind of, it also subverts your expectations when you meet up with again. Like, when you meet up with Hubert again, he's a total dick and he kicks the crap out of you. I tried so many times to try and beat Hubert, but the game will not let you. You have to lose. No, it's, it's one of those fights where you're just not allowed to win. Yeah. Gotta love those in RPGs. Definitely. I also thought some parts of the main game, like I know we've talked a lot about how it's really lighthearted, but it also does have some darker moments as well. I mean, like the backbone of part of it is this, essentially the fate of another planet, which is, I don't know if I want to say it because it's spoilers, but it's not doing too well. Yeah. And another thing is just Richard himself. The way that he acts throughout the game, there was one part where like Sophie was like extending her hand to him, like after something had happened, instead of like doing the cliche thing of just like, oh yes, we're friends or whatever. I think he, like, didn't he, like, stab her or something? Yeah, I think he attacks her. Yeah, he attacks her, which is like, holy shit, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, I think it kind of goes back to with that whole Asbel meeting up with Hubert again earlier on. Because Hubert becomes this, like, when you first meet him as a kid, he's just this big scaredy cat. He is afraid of everything. He's very shy and timid. And then when you meet him, he's this outgo- he's like a general in an army. And he's, like, younger than Asbel. He's become, like, a hard ass. He's really jaded. And it's one of the coolest tonal differences in the game when you have to fight him and he just kicks the ever-loving crap out of you in that, uh, in that impossible-to-win boss fight. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I first saw Hubert in the game, I was like, oh man, it's my, it's my little bro, <laughs> he's back. It sounds like you're thinking of it like how Asbel was. You know what? That's actually pretty spot on for the writers in that respect. You gotta give them some props for that. There were some moments like that where you're like, you're on the exact same page as Asbel. And like, Sharia is like such an ice queen. Yeah, especially for how she was acting. Like, yeah, they subvert your expectations a lot like that without when you meet up with each character again. Now, I, I do have to say, though, I think we can agree on this. Like, one of the, the weakest aspects of the game is probably the soundtrack. Yeah, definitely. Like, for the guys behind it, too, and the work they've done before, it's really unmemorable. You know, we have our issues with the childhood arc, but I would say, like, the, the battle song for, like, normal encounters, that song is, like, really, you know, really charming. Yeah, it's like one of the only ones that really sticks out, and then most of the, the rest of the game is just simply stuff that kind of just fades away. So there's some songs that, like you said, are there are there are good. They do their job, but they don't really do anything more outside that to st stick around your mind. If this was some other series or this was some other game, I'd say like it's a it's a solid soundtrack. But for a Tales game, it's on the lower end. It's not Matoy Sakuraba at his best. Definitely not. He's a man who's basically, he's behind almost every single soundtrack in the series. And from what I've heard from him, I know he can do a lot better. Yeah, like Vesperia or Zillia, I think, have much better soundtracks. Yeah, exactly. So I think that another problem people have with is the linearity. Is that Grace's F is a lot more linear than the other games. It doesn't have a big sprawling overworld. The game generally forces you to keep moving. I think Hiro Baba, the producer of the series, he best described it as a highway. You're always moving forward. You're never stalling. You're always going. Well, I'll say this to the to those people. Have you played Final Fantasy X? Did, did, did you like that game? I didn't, but that's not the point. That game, <laughs> that game did the exact same thing. I'd say that game did it way worse, too. Yes. Whereas it was much harder to revisit areas till way later in the game, and you were in the, every area is essentially just a straight line. You could literally just, like, turn right around and go through the entire game. Yeah. Which is, I think that's not great. <laughs> Grace's by comparison does it a lot better. Another thing that a lot of people didn't like was how it blocks off certain areas where you go up to somewhere, there's an invisible wall and they, the character will say, oh, why am I going this way? It's not the right way. That is something you see in other RPGs though. You do see that in a lot of RPGs and also to be fair, like what's the gain in going into an area where the monsters are gonna kill you in one shot? I don't know, people like that. <laughs> People love it when they walk around Xenoblade and they walk into the level 70 monster when they're level 5 and get their asses kicked. I don't know. I haven't played Xenoblade personally, so can't comment on that. But I did play Final Fantasy 2, and it did something similar, and I thought it was dumb. I didn't see the point of being able to, like, 
walk into some area where the monsters are like 10, 20 levels higher than you and they one shot you. I, I don't find that fun. I guess it's the difference between having the illusion of freedom and just saying, no, just keep going, please. Yeah, I can see that. I would say like Final Fantasy VII, for example, a big portion of the first disc you spend in Midgar. And then when you get out, you see the world map and you're like, oh, I'm this is big sprawling world. I can run around, do whatever you want. And not really, actually. You still have to follow the strict path that the game has laid out for you. It isn't until much later until everything is opened up. But, I mean, yeah, there is that difference of, like, you, you get that feeling of being able to go wherever you want. And I guess in that sense, Graces takes away that feeling. But, come on, let's be more objective here, folks. It is what it is, and I think that Graces is well designed in this aspect because it's not letting you go into an area where you're going to get one-shotted. And I'd say another point in Grace's favor is because the developers are, are for a little bit at least, controlling kind of where you're going, the game's a lot better paced than many other RPGs and other Tales games. There's always things happening. It's not like in, in Tales of Exilia 2 where the developers just stop you and then just let you explore. In here, it's always a natural progression. I actually mentioned that in my review, but like with Zillia 2, the game poses a pacing issue depending on what kind of player you are. Like if you're a completionist style player, the pacing's not gonna bother you because you're just gonna be wanting to do all of the side stuff. But if you're more of a story-driven kind of player and you just wanna get the extraneous stuff out of the way and you just wanna get straight to the story, that acts as a wall. Yeah, exactly. Graces definitely does not have that problem. It has a very smooth pace. There's always stuff happening. It, it always keeps it interesting, I think. Yeah, another thing going for this game, too, is there's a lot of content. I don't know about you, but my first playthrough, including Legacies and Lineages, took me about, I want to say, like 60, 60, 70 hours. Yeah, and trying to platinum this game, getting all the trophies. Oh. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh. I had one friend who actually managed to do it. How many hours? He didn't tell me. I should ask him. <laughs> he probably won't tell you. <laughs> He's probably embarrassed. He told me that, that that was hard. Like, that was really hard to do, to, to get all of the trophies. There's so many things to do. There's so many challenges that you can do. There's the Colosseum, maxing out the Elif Mixer, the Zone Cage, all these things that you can do in the game. So even if the game appears more linear than the other games, the game still gives you a wealth of content. You are not going to be bored playing this game because there's always things to do. And very little of this content is bad or unremarkable. Like outside of the childhood arc, I personally don't really have any problems with the game. There's no water temple. There's no dungeon I hate. There's no boss I hate fighting. I think it's all really well paced and really well designed. And I said this in my own review on my channel, but the combat alone and the core gameplay is worth it. Even if you absolutely hate everything else about the game, totally worth it just for that combat title system and what have you. I completely agree. I, I would say like I would put the combat system right up there with like some of the best combat systems I've ever played, RPGs or otherwise. Just like in general, it's one of the absolute best. And I think it says a lot, a game of its length, and you, both you and I want to revisit it again, despite the fact we've already experienced it. Yeah, when I was playing through playing the game before this discussion, I was having so much fun playing it, I didn't want to put it down. It was, <laughs> it's just so good. Should we talk about maybe the visuals? It, after all, is a port of an HD port of a Wii game. I wanted to bring that up too, actually. I'm, I'm glad you reminded me. Because as I was playing through Zillia 2, one of the problems I had with the game was the slowdown. I don't remember Zillia 1 having that much slowdown. Maybe it's just because I haven't played it in a while. But the slowdown in Zillia 2 got pretty annoying at times. And Graces is silky smooth. That game technically works so well. It's so smooth. I can't think of any moments where the frame rate drops or the game lags or anything like that. The game just plays silky smooth. When I played Tales of Exilia, I played it with multiplayer and playing it with three players in the later game when you have all the really uh, screen intensive spells, I did have slowdown quite a bit. And with Exilia 2, like you said, there is a lot of slowdown at points and it gets pretty bad. And with Graces F, even with four people, Never. And I think that's the kind of point you want. Do you want a slightly better looking game? Because Graces F definitely isn't terrible looking. It's not going to redefine how you think of RPGs visually, but it doesn't look atrocious either. And for a game that was originally on Wii, I'd say it actually looks pretty decent. I'm going to have to say that I think I like how it looks more than Zillia, to be honest. Yeah, it's a different art style too. It definitely is. And I will say that Zillia's 
cutscenes are more dynamic, like there's more stuff going on and the characters moving around and stuff, but Grace is still, it's a really good looking game. And I had a commenter who said this once, and I think I agree with what he said. Grace is F is probably one of the best HD renditions ever. Exactly. Especially given how buggy and kind of a mess the Wii version was. Yeah, this is like more than just a return to form. The original Wii version had some like really awful glitches in it. Like I remember one of them being that if you had a certain amount of gold, it reset and you were down to zero. That's just awful. And there's like game breaking bugs and whatnot, and people actually had to go to the GameStop and return the disc, and they'd have to give you another one. Like it was ridiculous. But with Grace's F, you don't have any of that, and we we lucked out in getting the definitive version. Like I like I can't even imagine how different this video could be, or this discussion if we had the Wii version with all these bugs. Like we'd be trying to. This video wouldn't be called "Is the game overhated?" It would be "We hate this game." <laughs> <laughs> Is it hated enough? And you know what, personally, I definitely prefer performance over visuals. Grace's F excels in its performance. Like you said, like I don't typically play Tales games with tons of people. I usually just play them by myself. But just hearing that you play with like a full party of, of players and it doesn't slow down, that's incredible. And that we're all entertained. Even though this is a single player game at heart, I can play with four or three other friends and we are all entertained the entire way through. We would meet up and organize like 10 hour days to play through the game. And that's how we did it. And I think if you have friends and you want to play an RPG together, this is the one for you. But there's one thing I will say about the overall technical performance is that the lip syncing is pretty atrocious. Yeah, I would say that's a problem with the series in general. I'd say Grace's F has like some of the worst moments though, in terms of like really off-putting lip syncing. Yeah, I think American Localization Team, they need to hire some programmers to fix that. But at the end of the day, I think that's, it's not really even that big of a deal. No, it's a very minor, it's a nitpick more than anything else. All right, I think we've covered pretty much everything. You want to wrap it up, dude? Sure. So at the end of the day, do you like good battle systems, good progression, good alchemy? A fairly good story with really well-written characters that I think the, the one thing I want to say about the characters are is that it's really hard to hate any of them outside of maybe when they're children or kind of as well his cliche written lines it's hard to hate them because their interactions with each other are so humorous and because they are really well written and at the end of the day if any of the things we've been talking about sound appealing it's definitely a game if you've never given a shot do it, and if you dropped it after the first little bit, go back into it. It's a game that I think will surprise people. Like you were saying, like even though I had my problems with Asbel as well, I wouldn't call him a bad character by any means regardless. He, I still think he's a, he's a pretty decent character. Yeah, he's not going to get on any top 10 list, but I still liked him. And I would say the other characters are also really great. Like Pascal is my favorite. Oh yeah, she's hilarious. I loved Pascal. She also gets points because she did the voice of Saber. Yeah, that helps, that helps. <laughs> and we haven't talked about Manlik either. Or Malik is his real name, but I call him Manlik because he's the manliest Tales character I know of. Yeah, that dude is awesome. And he was supplied with an equally manly voice, Jameson Price. That dude he nailed it. is so good. The voice acting could be a point of contention for some people for dubbing versus subbing. But I think the voice actors did a really good job. And I think that best comes across through all the skits where they just nail it. And they're just all entertaining to listen to. I really get the feeling that the voice actors had fun with the characters. Like, they liked being the characters, and that really comes off during the skits where they're bouncing off each other, like, really well. So play it. It'll surprise you. But yeah, I think Tales of Grace's F is criminally underrated. I think that it definitely does not deserve some of the hate that it gets. While I do acknowledge its flaws, there's no such thing as perfection. If you can look past some of these issues, I think you'll come to find a really fun game. Just a blast to play. The combat system alone, like you said before, is totally worth it. I defy you to find many battle systems better than this one. This is easily one of the best. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for joining me, man. It was definitely a pleasure to have you. Hey, anytime. I had a great time talking about it. And I think any time that we, is it, that we can allow people to give a game another shot or just help raise awareness for a great game is one that's worth taking. Definitely agree. Hopefully we can have you on again. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. This has been Shintai and Darren from The Gaming Pilgrimage. Be sure to check out his channel. Link in the description. Take care, everyone.